What we're doing here is a quiz that's taken directly from the QAs 27, 31, 32, 33 that were assigned for a week uh, prior to the, the week prior to the uh, class, the week prior to Thanksgiving. Um, and this is the first class after Thanksgiving. I gave you a couple of, I gave everybody a couple of constants, the gravitational constant, the universal gravitational constant, and the formula for the moment of inertia of a rod uh, rotated about its center, both of which you need and both of which I would also give you on a test. Actually, for 201, I expect people to know the moment of inertia of the rod. For 121, I would give you the moment of inertia, um, the formula for the moment of inertia. Okay. Uh, the first question basically asked uh, if you got something, uh, uh, a satellite <coughs> at a distance of 10,000 meters from the center of the Earth, or 10,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth, and then uh, you're given the force on that satellite, force exerted on that satellite by the gravitational attraction due to the Earth, uh, and actually more appropriately the gravitational attraction between the two objects because the object also pulls in the earth with an equal and opposite force. <coughs> then we double the distance to 20,000 kilometers and ask what is the gravitational attraction? Well, the gravitational attraction we know to be the inverse, to be a, of an inverse square nature with respect to the separation. So. If we double the separation, that's going to result in 1 over 2 squared, or 1 fourth the amount of force. Now, if the original force is 8,000 newtons, then 1 fourth of that is going to be 2,000 newtons. So an 8,000 uh, newton, a, a satellite that experiences an 8,000 newton force at 10,000 kilometers will experience a 2,000 newton force at 20,000 kilometers from the center of the Earth. Okay, well, that's exactly what we say here. The 8,000 newtons at 10,000 kilometer distance implies one fourth of that, or 2,000 newtons at the 20,000 kilometer distance. Now, the next problem we actually, for this problem, we didn't ever have to use the gravitational constant. We didn't ever have to use the Newton's law of universal gravitation, the F equals big G m1 m2 over r squared formula. <coughs> But for the second problem, we do. First problem, we could reason out just by the fact that you have an inverse square with the distance. Um, in, in the first problem, the two masses were the same in both cases. Of course, G, big G is always the same. So the only thing that was changing was R. It was doubling. If you double R, you get one fourth the result. Um, this could have been solved using the universal gravitational constant in Newton's law of universal gravitation, but all you needed to solve this was the inverse square nature. Here we need to use the law of gravitation. We're given a 4,000 kilogram mass and a 100 kilogram mass with their centers separated by 70 centimeters, 0.7 meters. Well, we just plug the two masses, M1 and M2 are the 4,000 and the 100 kilogram masses, and R is the 0.7 meters and, of course, that's going to be squared. And then our universal gravitational constant. Now, why did we use 0.7 meters instead of 70 centimeters? Simply because the gravitational constant is given in terms of meters and not centimeters. So it was much simpler to express this in meters so our units would all work out. You see that we're going to have a kilogram times a kilogram, which is a kilogram squared. We have a kilogram squared in the denominator of our universal gravitational constant, so that's all going to divide out. The kilograms will all divide out. We're going to have a meter squared when we square this, <coughs> which will divide the meter squared in this unit, leaving us only units of newtons. Well, we do this. We multiply things out. We do the arithmetic, and I believe we end up with 5.4 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. And that's a small force, but it's actually a perceptible force. We could actually perceive a force of 5.4 times 10 to the negative fifth newtons. 
now getting a 4,000 kilogram mass and a 100 kilogram mass in a 70 centimeter proximity might be a little challenging, but there are materials that are dense enough to do this.